Lecture 6.1, Day 1, Antiderivatives and Slope Fields. This is a picture of two telescopes at Kitt Peak National Observatory in Arizona. And to give you a sense of scale, if you look right here, this is an awning above the door. And then there's an elevator to the top. First, a little review. Consider y equals x squared plus 3. Then y prime equals 2x. Or y equals x squared minus 5. y prime equals 2x. It doesn't matter whether the constant was a 3 or negative 5, since when we take the derivative, the constant disappears. However, when we try to reverse the operation, given y prime equals 2x, find y, we get y equals x squared plus c. We don't know what the constant is, so we put c in the answer to remind us that there might have been a constant. If we have some more information, we can find c. Given y prime equals 2x and y equals 4 when x equals 1, find the equation for y. First we find the antiderivative and get y equals x squared plus c. Then we plug in our initial values, y equals 4 and x equals 1. Solving for c, we get 3 equals c. So our original equation must have been y equals x squared plus 3. This is called an initial value problem. We need the initial values to find the constant. An equation containing a derivative is called a differential equation. It becomes an initial value problem when you are given the initial condition and are asked to find the original equation. Initial value problems and differential equations can be illustrated with a slope field. Slope fields are mostly used as a learning tool and are mostly done on a computer or graphing calculator, but a recent AP test asks students to draw a simple one by hand. We will start with y prime equals 2x. We pick a value for x and a value for y, in this case, 0, 0. So y prime equals 0. Now we draw a short line segment with a slope of 0 across the point 0, 0. If we choose x equals 0 and y equals 1, y prime is still 0. So we draw another line segment with a slope of 0. If x is 1 and y is 2, once again y prime is 0. So we draw another line segment with a slope of 0. And you can see where this is going because there is no y in the derivative equation. It doesn't matter what y is. If x is 0, we're getting a slope of 0. So we could keep filling these in, but they're all going to be horizontal segments. So let's move over. If x is 1 and y is 0, the slope is 2. So now I draw a line segment with a slope of 2. At 1, 1, the slope is still 2. So I draw another line segment. And we see that, once again, because there is no y 
in the derivative equation, the slope is going to be the same as long as x is 1. So we fill those in. This speeds up the example problem anyway. If x equals 2 and y is 0, then the slope is 4. So I draw a steeper line segment with a stroke slope of 4. And I fill those in. Now at x equals negative 1, the slope is negative 2. So I draw a line segment with a slope of negative 2 and fill those in. At x is negative 2, the slope is negative 4. And I fill those line segments in. If you know an initial condition, such as 1, negative 2, you can sketch the curve. So I look for the point 1, negative 2, which is right there. And I follow the line segments in both directions to draw the curve. By following the slope field, you get a rough picture of what the curve looks like. In this case, it is a parabola. For more challenging differential equations, we will use the calculator to draw the slope field. Let's start with dy dx equals negative 2xy over 1 plus x squared. Notice that this differential equation has x and y values in it. On the TI-89, push mode and change the graph type to differential equations. Go to diamond y equals, press diamond vertical bar, and make sure fields is set to slope field. Once you've done that once, it should stay that way. Now go to diamond y equal and enter the equation as y1 prime equals negative 2 times t times y1 divided by parentheses 1 plus t to the second. Notice that we have to replace x with t and y with y1. Leave yi1 blank. Set the viewing window. Press diamond window. And enter the following values. t0 equals 0. t max equals 10. t step equals 0.1. t plot equals 0. x min is negative 10. x max is 10. x scale is 1 y min is negative 5, y max is 5, y scale is 1. Then draw the graph, diamond graph. Be sure to change the graph type back to function when you are done graphing slope fields. Integrals such as the integral from 1 to 4 of x squared dx are called definite integrals because we can find a definite value for the answer. The integral from 1 to 4 of x squared dx is 1 third x cubed plus c evaluated from 1 to 4 or 1 third times 4 cubed plus c minus 1 third times 1 cubed plus c or 64 thirds plus c minus 1 third minus c and the c's cancel out. In fact the constant always cancels out when finding a definite integral so we leave it out.
we do not normally show the plus C in this step. So our answer is 63 thirds or 21. Integrals such as the integral of x squared dx are called indefinite integrals because we cannot find a definite value for the answer. The integral of x squared dx is 1 third x cubed plus c. When finding indefinite integrals, we always include the plus c. Many of the integral formulas are listed in your book. The first ones that we will be using are just the derivative formulas in reverse. Our book shows a technique to graph the integral of a function using the numerical integration function of the calculator, NINT, or NINT. Y equals the integral from 0 to x, t sine t dt, or y1 equals NINT x sine x, x zero x. This is extremely slow and is usually not worth the trouble. A better way is to use the calculator to find the indefinite integral and plot the resulting expression. That way the calculator doesn't have to redo the integral every single pixel across the screen. To find the indefinite integral on the TI-89, use integral of x times sine x comma x. The calculator will return sine x minus x cosine x. Notice that it leaves out the plus c. Use diamond copy and diamond paste to put this expression in the diamond y equals screen and then plot the graph. And there we have it.